today I'm trying a uh, well, something a little bit different. I'm going to just go through the whole painting process with no cuts um, instead of how I normally do it. This is not necessarily going to be the new norm um, because I know, you know, this is going to be about an hour long video and a lot of people can't just sit and watch an hour long video or want to watch an hour long video. But I just thought I'd give it a whirl, mostly because I want to see if I can paint this guy in an hour. Um, and so that kind of lends itself to doing that. And I didn't want to figure out actually going live and being live. I'd rather just record it and then I'll put it up and you guys will be seeing this obviously as a video. Uh, so this is the something boss on Squigasaur. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to paint him. I've, uh, I'm going to slap chop him, as you may be able to tell. I primed him black and I dry brushed him with gray. Uh, specifically, do I have the gray here? Yes. Specifically with this D&D Prismatic Paint Gray Ooze, which is just Vallejo paint with a different name, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then D&D Prismatic Paint Banshee White on top of that. So we're going to start off with the Squigasaur himself. And we're going to start with Luxion Purple. And these are going to be for the stripes that are going to be on him. So we're, we're going to need a little bit of freehanding here. Um, it should be pretty simple, but... So he's got kind of a... Well, not kind of. He's got a seam running down his back from where I'm lazy and don't green stuff my miniatures. But we're going to use that seam to our advantage in this case. And that's where we're going to start our stripes here. So I'm just going to take this and just kind of draw them in. They don't have to be super exact or anything. Just tapering as they come down here. Like this. Okay, I think I'll come down a little bit farther here. And widen them out just a little bit. There we go. And then do the next one. Again, they don't have to be super exact or anything. I'm just trying to get a basic basic idea here. Come down here and do that. We're going to do this all the way down this guy. So and I'm going to have them get longer as they come down here. Down the body. Spot there. I'm trying to avoid pretty much everything else because most of this guy is going to be contrast paint. So I think that might be part of his saddle I just painted there, but it's all right. We'll fix it later. And then come down here onto his legs. Like that. Just kind of taper it like that. That'll work. And then the middle of his tail. one more here there we go so there's our there's our stripes coming down here um, I think I'm gonna do no that's his nose right there so yeah I'll be uh, I'll be done gotta move my water cup it's on the wrong side all right so then I'm just gonna flip him around and basically start in the same spots we had here and just come on down trying to keep them roughly the same length and same width but if they're not the same length it's not the biggest of deal because typically you won't ever be seeing the two sides of him at one time you have to have some pretty 
funky looking eyes to make that happen. Come down here. Boom. And update the one that's in there. Okay. And then he's got his mechanical leg here, so I'm just going to put some purple in a couple spots to indicate where there might be stripes. And then we'll come down here. Grab that one. Grab that one. And this one. And that's it. Let's bring these down to a little bit of a sharper point here. And okay, those come down quite a bit further. So I will bring these down here. There we go. That should do. And now, the slightly tricky part, we're going to take our main skin color here, which is going to be Eldari Emerald, and we'll just we're just going to put it everywhere else on this guy's skin. So this is going to be tricky because we don't want these colors to be mixing. But it should be okay as long as we're careful. And we may need to go back and do a second coat of the Luxion purple, just because it's not super defined, super dark right now. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it looks with the green once it's once it's dried. Being very careful to not get too much mixing. A little bit is alright, right on the edge. It's not going to be that big a deal. But uh, I would like to not have too much. And then I also need to be careful around the other parts of him. So like his teeth right here. I'd like to do this whole guy in contrast. So I need to be careful around his teeth. His nose I'll probably do in a darker color anyway, so I'm just going to paint all of this in while I can, and not worry about it. Where's that going to go? Be careful with the paint. This will be my first piece of content in, I'm not exactly sure how long it's been, a couple of months probably. Um, Oh, had a lot of things going on. Just uh, just a lot of work to do. Didn't have a ton of time to be doing this, unfortunately. Hopefully, over the summer, at least summer where I am, um, I will have a bunch more time. Um, I know there's that school of thought you're not supposed to say your goals out loud to people because you get the same amount of endorphins from telling people you're going to do something that you do from actually doing it. And once you have those endorphins, then you're less motivated to do them. But since I'm not going to actually see anyone's reaction to this, I think I'm okay. Um, my goal is to try to get a video out each week over the summer. I'm not 100% sure if that will happen. I know for a couple weeks we will will be good for content because I'll be painting the new 10th edition box set for 40k. So there'll be lots of lots of new miniatures to paint for content. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll still be able to find some stuff. Obviously this guy is not a new miniature and I'm painting him. Um, I've Picked him up a while ago, and I was just looking at him the other day, and I was like, oh, I would like to paint him. And I figured I'd try this new format out, which is sort of like a stream, but without the hassles of actually being live. Um, in the sense that it's just 
no interruptions, just painting. Um, and I thought it would be a fun challenge to see if I could actually paint this guy in an hour. I think I can. It's been about 10 minutes so far. I think I spent about a minute or so getting things together. So I'll give myself to the 61 minute mark to finish this guy. But I also thought that if I was just going to block in colors an hour, probably too much. Um, I paint pretty fast. And just laying contrast over the uh, Slap Chop Prime is not too complicated. So I figured I would do this stripe pattern to uh, make it a little more complicated. Put the pressure on just a little bit, I suppose. think I'm recording this with my phone and I think my phone is still doing notifications yep it sure was it's vibrating in the middle of the video very rude it should be all sorted out now though so I'm just gonna continue with the skin here I think I could probably use a bigger brush for some of this, but I just really don't want to, especially on stuff like these claws and the teeth earlier, there's a, I'm going to be using a much lighter color on them, and so I don't want to get any of this Eldari Emerald on them. But I could probably switch to a bigger brush for some of these other areas, and maybe I will on the other side. Um, but, uh, in terms of other content that I might do this summer, um, I'm working on my master's degree right now in public history, which if you don't know what that is, it's, uh, basically history for the public. So, uh, National Park Service, museums, stuff like that. Um, and my thesis project is building some dioramas for my school's museum and so uh, that will involve a lot of painting and building and that sort of stuff so I might put some of that on the channel depending on what it is if it uh, if it relates to the typical content I have on the channel so that might be something else you see. I don't know if people would be interested in that. But I might do it a couple times. Here or there. Alright, there's the teeth. And I could also, around these teeth, um, I could just paint them a, a color and then go over them with contrast. But I really like to keep the slap chop look to them. So if I paint them a solid color, that will be gone. Getting in here, being careful. I'm also not going to be super precious about it. Uh, this is, after all, a one hour paint job where on a pretty big, I don't know if I'd necessarily call him a centerpiece model, but he's certainly one of the fancier models in the army. So normally people would spend more time on this guy, but I'm willing to sacrifice some quality just to see if I can do it in an hour. I've got a, uh, I don't know if this is going to make it onto the channel just because I don't know exactly how I would do it. Um, I record all my videos and stuff with my phone and I don't think my video, my camera I don't think my phone will record for 12 hours straight. I think it would melt. Um, but I am going to be 
doing a 12 hour army pretty soon here in the next couple months probably um, painting 2,000 points of crimson fists in 12 hours and uh, so there might be something um, related to that on the channel maybe I could break in for an hour and paint a uh, paint the captain or something live we shall see we shall see the other thing is that the extra time taken to set that stuff up and everything is time out of the 12 hours that I probably won't have if I'm painting 2,000 points in 12 hours um, I think I think it's 62 models or something uh, all Primaris so it's gonna be a task for sure all right I think we're just about done with the Eldari Emerald all right so I think I think I will leave the purple as it is. I don't think it needs to be any darker. I think it's good. So now, everything is just out of sorts here. I haven't painted, painted live in a long time, or, you know, recorded in a long time, so everything out of sorts. But now, I'm going to do the skin of the orc so that we, uh, we can get the kind of painting it from the inside out as I'm sure if you've seen videos of mine before I've talked about and plenty of other people have talked about it also um, painting things how you would get dressed so skin would come first then the next layer of clothes armor etc um, and I've said positive and negative things about it before um, I don't think it's the end-all be-all by any stretch I think a lot of the times there are really good reasons to paint in a different order, but for this guy, I am going to paint in this order. And for one, it will help because on these, um, or Beast Snaga Boss, I think that's what he's called, um, just came to me. Um, on these Beast Snagas, uh, there's a lot of different materials, and while this slap chop priming method is awesome. For contrast paint it can sort of unify everything and make it harder to tell which surfaces are what and so if I get my skin all blocked in that will really help to kind of alleviate any confusion about what uh, what materials are what just because skin can be mistaken for other things uh, like leather or cloth even um, and so if they're all blocked in, they'll create natural barriers between other things to make it easier. Um, and this color, by the way, is Gut Ripper Flesh that I'm using. It's my, my favorite go-to orc skin color. I know orcs are typically a lot darker, but I like this sort of lightish, olive-ish green. Not really olive, but I'm not exactly sure how to describe it. It's just a nice green. Make sure we get all his neck back here. The back of his ear. And his other hand here. his arm and again um, I am going pretty quick on this guy not gonna be a masterpiece by any stretch but uh he'll be battle ready that's good enough for me all right that is the skin done now let's find a good leather color let's see Skeleton Horde, maybe. Dark Oath Flesh, maybe. Golem Flesh, maybe. 
Garagax suit or snake bite leather. Let's be honest. That's always what I was gonna go for. Snake bite leather. It just makes sense, especially for these guys. So just gonna block in all the leather with this. That's the leather on him and on his squig. And uh, on models that are being slap chopped, there's always the question of how do you do the metallics? Because, you know, there's no metallic um, contrast paint. At least, not yet. I would suspect it's coming. But uh, not yet, anyway. At the time of filming, it's not a thing. Um, and so what I've been experimenting with is... Just taking some metallic paint and dry brushing it onto the areas that are supposed to be metallic. And it doesn't look the best, but it sort of fits the theme. It sort of becomes unified with the rest of the slap chop. Um, and so I've been, I've been liking it. It's not to everyone's taste because it does look a little weird, but that's probably what I'll do with it. Um, and of course on orcs, that can be alleviated somewhat by the fact that a lot of times their armor, which is a big metallic component, is colored. So it doesn't actually matter as much, but this guy will have a lot of silver and bronze on him probably, so we'll give that a shot when we get there. All this, like, all the buckles and stuff on his belt. They're a good example of stuff that's going to be uh, probably actually metallic colored. As opposed to colored. Like his, uh, his shoulder pad, for instance. That's going to be a color, not just silver. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it red. So I don't know if red is really going to go with the scheme we have on our Squigasaur here. Um, not that the rider needs to match, because obviously he just hopped on a beast. As far as I know, he didn't coordinate his outfit with the colors of the squig he found. But, you know, I guess I can't say for sure. Maybe that's important to the Orc War Bosses. That their outfits match the squigasaur that they ride. Alright, let's get the saddle here. His, uh, his pants are leather, but we're going to do them in a different color. They may end up being black, um, or they may be another shade of brown. We'll have to see. Uh, oh, the other hand has more leather on it. And I think the pistol on his left side of the Squigasaur might have leather on it somewhere. No, I'm wrong. How is that held on? Oh, I guess this? That's how it's held on to the model, but I don't know how it's held on, like, in the actual, like the story of this actual character. I don't know how that pistol's holding on there. Whatever. Orc magic. That can be the answer. Alright, I think... Oh, no, no, no. I skipped this whole big bag back here. Definitely leather. And, you know, if this wasn't a one-hour paint job, maybe I would do a different color for the saddle and a different color for this bag and all sorts of stuff, but like I said, we're just going for battle ready, one hour, call it done. So that's what we're getting out of this one. Alright, double checking, double checking. I don't see any more leather. Oh, yeah, nope, that was wrong. The wrapping on his sword here. Alright. So, 
Now we will go to what? I think the red. I think I am going to do... Well, I'm definitely going to do that in red. So let's start there. Actually, I might do it in orange. Yeah, I'll do Magma Droth Flame for this. It's like a... I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it looks like a tank. Could be filled with some go juice or something. I'm going to paint it orange. little bit here all right anything else that uh looks like it's about to explode that we could also do in orange nope doesn't look like it all right that's fine that can just be a nice little detail there now i will go on to red and i'm gonna do blush terror red for this i was gonna do ball red um but ball red is one of these newer contrast paints there's the couple of them. I can't remember what they called them, but they're very flat. And so they kind of ruin the effect you get from a uh, slap chop. Um, normally, when you're co painting with them, they have excellent coverage. Um, like here, let me grab an example. Like this is my, oh, he's coming apart. This is my um, Imperial Fist, who I painted with the Imperial Fist contrast paint. And as you can see, the coverage of that yellow is incredibly strong and incredibly smooth um which is great but when you're trying to hold on to the slap chop effect it can nullify it somewhat so we're going to use flush terror which is not one of those paints i'm just going to start up here on his shoulder so this is just going to be basically his his uh, clan color or whatever I think they're called clans right um, so this will be on the, the more decorative pieces of armor just goes around here the other thing with uh, with the snake bites or Beast Snaga Boys, rather. Snake Bites is the clan, I think. Um, is they have they have these metal teeth that almost all the orcs have, but then they also have like teeth they've pulled out of creatures or whatever. So it can get kind of confusing <laughs> on uh, what bits are made of metal and what bits are made of actual bone. All right, there we go. Then this armor panel down here, um, you might be able to tell it was red before I started painting this guy and decided to reprime him, or not reprime him, sorry, I decided to uh, to dry brush him, to slap chop him. I had him just painted, uh, primed him black, and then was just painting him regularly before, but decided to change that. So that's why some of the red was still showing through, but we are painting it red now so it doesn't matter side of that panel good all right and then let's see knee pad that can be red this is one of those things also that um i've talked about before is when you have a in this case, I guess I'd call this a highlight color because it's not really, um, it's not really a main color. But you want to be able to see that color from every angle of your miniature. And so right now we're pretty good. This from the back is you can kind of see it, but we need something else. And so this uh, this armor panel up here on his wrist is going to serve us well. Um, that's just not really super important but it's just so that you know you can easily tell the theme of your miniature from any direction you don't want to have a color present on only one side of your miniature at least uh you know obviously if there's like a knife and it has a color that knife color oops got some red on his hand let me just clean that up um if you have a one-off 
thing, then there doesn't have to be more of that color on the rest of him. But uh, get off of there. There we go. Um, then that's fine. But if you have a color like this that's part of your color scheme, you should try to have it be visible on all sides of your miniature. So now, from that direction, it's much more visible. So we'll just give him a spin. That's not bad. This angle, there's just a lot here. So, you, you know, you can kind of see it there. But there isn't really anything that's presenting that can really be read. So we'll just have to live with that. But I would like to maybe have a little more red from this angle. But that's all right. That will be okay. So now I'm going to do the fur color, I think. And for that, I would like aggro stones. This is kind of a darker version of the Skeleton Horde. And we're going to put this on uh, thicker than we might normally. Because we, we're going to use Skeleton Horde on the teeth and stuff. And we really want there to be a distinction between these two colors. So we're going to lay this one on thicker. So we'll have a just a little bit of extra help when our uh, skeleton horde and aggro students are near each other. Thankfully, most of the stuff that's going to be skeleton horde is down here, so it won't be a huge deal. But it's good to uh, good to have some differentiation help when you can. Get a time check. 32 minutes. So we've got 29 left because I'm giving myself a minute. Assuming I took about a minute to get everything set. I think we are making good progress. I think we will have no problem getting this guy done in an hour. Um, that is not to include the base, um, which may be a cop out to some of you. Uh, I will accept that. Um, I have no idea how I want to base him. I don't really have an orc army. I have enough models to make an army, but I mostly just own models that, wow, that looks cool on the shelf. I'll get him. And uh, that's sort of the, the basis of my orc army. So I haven't painted very many of the models. But uh, one day, you know, one day. All right, let's do the inside of his mouth. And for that, I'm going to use Doomfire Magenta. Just to make this Squigasaur the brightest or most vibrant Squigasaur I can, apparently. So let's get in here. There we go. Just making sure I don't go too far out into the green um, with this. Just want to be on the inside here and it can peek out just a little bit around the teeth and stuff but uh don't want to go crazy a little bit a little too much red poking out there just flood it with some water and then pull it back out rub it off a little bit there we go there'll be a little bit of pink sticking through there but that's perfectly fine and just a little bit of his gums poking between his teeth all right so, we're coming to the end of the contrast. We're not at the end of the contrast yet, but we're getting there. So we'll be moving to metallics pretty soon. But first, what I'm just noticing, is that skin? No, I think it's 
No, I think it's metal. Okay, good. I thought it was skin down there. I thought his foot was legit, and the rest of it was metal. But no, I think it's all metal. Um, but first, before we go to the metallics, I'm going to do the skeleton horde here. I'm just going to do his whole mouth. I kind of forgot about uh, the fact that I wanted to contrast everything, and I just kind of painted all this green. So we're going to probably highlight up his face with some layer paint. Um, might have to do it with his nails here, too, because I did the same thing. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. As you can see there, I mean, like, I did just Skeleton Horde over the green, and it's differentiated enough um, for battle ready. It's not a problem at all. But uh, if we have extra time in our hour, then I will go back with a layer paint probably and just highlight it up a little bit. But for now, assuming we won't have extra time, I'm just going to paint in his teeth here with Skeleton Horde. Including these pink ones here. I need to rub them a little bit, get the last bit of the pink off. That's fine. I'm trying to, like right here, I need to soak this up because I don't want this paint being in the crevices because his, like right here, his teeth aren't leaking into the crevices. Um, his teeth are the color, and the crevice would be his skin. So, just to make sure it doesn't pool too much in there. A little bit is fine, because, honestly, on a battle-ready miniature, no one will ever be looking that closely. But, regardless, when possible, I try to avoid things like that. Alright, and then the back side of his teeth here. nails down here there we go and I'm pretty sure that's metal but man that kind of looks like skin all right I'm gonna paint it like skin I've made the executive decision I think that bottom part of the leg there is not metallic I think it's skin so I'm gonna paint it as if that is the case I could pull up a reference image and look at the one on the web store but ain't nobody got time for that So I will just paint it like this, and people can crucify me in the comments if this was supposed to be metallic. Alrighty. Then, we'll go back and do the skeleton horde over here. Alright, so in terms of contrast, what else do we need to do here? Pants. Pants, pants, pants. Pants can be black, since that's the color I picked up. Works for me. Black uh, usually looks pretty nice on slap chop anyway because it just looks like highlighted up gray since the base tone base coat is black anyway i'm just going to paint over these little details and i will punch them back up with the silver later won't be a problem All right, I think, oh, no, the problem I talked about earlier, I think figuring out which parts are animal teeth and which parts are actual metallic teeth. Right here, I think these are supposed to be animal teeth, so I am going to paint them in Skeleton Horde. Oh yeah, and I guess there's this giant skull on his back. We could paint that in 
skills in Horde 2. I was thinking because of these sticking up, I was thinking the whole thing was metal back here, but nope. It's pretty obviously bone. So I will do that. And then we're going to move on to the metallics. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dry brush carefully because there's a lot of non-metallic detail on this guy, obviously, that we've just been painting. We're going to carefully dry brush our metallic onto all of our surfaces here. And so for that, this is a worn down label, but this is a plate mail metal from uh, the Army Painter. I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my dry palette here. And then, like I said, very carefully, where is the brush I need? Where's the brush I need? Here it is. So we're going to use a brush like this. Uh, flat top, flat end, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to move my other brushes here. I'm going to take this, get most of it off here. And then we're just going to come through. And maybe this isn't dry brushing. Maybe some people would call this more over brushing, um, which is fair. Um, we're going to do this to all our metallic parts and then what we're going to do is some of this is going to stay this color uh, some of it is going to get painted with gore grunta fur to make sort of a nice bronzy color some of it is going to get painted or further dry brushed with screaming bell i think it's called and then some of it may be uh maybe painted with another color entirely but we are going to use several colors for that and we'll uh we'll, we shall see it's kind of a, a cheaty way to do metallics when there's slap chop involved but I think it works pretty well. So there's a lot of metal on this guy, so there's going to be quite a bit of this, but that's all right. A little too much paint on the brush there. Well, we'll save his sword for just a second. That's going to be a going to have to be pretty particular on how we do that, so as to not lose our our slap chop style. So we'll do everything else first. So yeah, these uh these spikes I'm going to do back and forth like this in a specific direction. There you go. And then, oh, I already did the back side of them. That's fine. And then I'll get this spike there. Get this thing. Okay. Get some, just a little bit of silver in here. All right. I think, oh, nope. I forgot I did my air. And this little spike here. All right. I think that's everything now except the sword so now on the sword we we'll get most of the paint off our brush here and then we're going to go on the cutting edge of the sword here which is you know this part and we're going to drag down from that at an angle like that Good, and then flip it and do the same thing down from the cutting angle. 
and it's okay if it's streaky. In fact, you want it to be kind of streaky, like the blade has been worn down from years of cutting. There we go. That's what we want. So now, as that dries, I'm going to do a couple more things here. Um, one, I'm going to take my ball red here. There we go. And I'm going to do the eyes, and I think I'm going to do the spittle or blood coming out of his mouth here in this same color. Like this. I'll probably put some blood for the blood gut on it at a later date, but for our one hour battle ready, this will work just fine. And the eyes here. There we go. There we go. Good. So then, oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't get any silver on them, but that's all right. All right, so then we are going to use a combination of Screaming Bell. We're going to dry brush some Screaming Bell, probably. Uh, let's see. Some not golden flesh. How about some dark oak flesh? And some Gore Grunt of Fur, if I can find it. Yep, there we go. Gore Grunt of Fur. So we'll start with that. Gore Grunt of Fur and see what we have here. So this is going to give us a very dark bronze color. So I think I'll start with this thing here. And uh, as you can see, the metallic will still shine through on this. And we'll still get our, our slap chop sort of pattern, but it will also be metallic. There we go. And some of these maybe. This is just really just picking out uh, picking out random things that you want to be metallic at this point. Um, it's a little bit different on this orc just because there's so much metallic on him. A lot of miniatures don't have a ton of metallic on them. So it makes it easier. You just pick out the last couple bits and you're good to go. So this guy it's a bit more. Okay, let's put that at the top here. I think I'll do these little, whatever these are, in this color. I want the back as well. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, this mechanical leg here. We'll do this. And this. And then maybe the piston rod here. And this spring down here. Why not? Over. And then maybe some, maybe the barrel of this pistol. Why not? There we go. All right, so then we will switch to our other color, our dark oak flesh. And we'll pick out some other things. So maybe this plate down here. Maybe this part in here. Why not? Oh yeah, I realized we're uh, we're gonna cheat on this hour a little bit because after all these metallics dry, I'm gonna do uh, Null Noel over all of them. But 
these will these will take a little while to set up um, all these contrast paints so I don't want to do it prematurely and mix or risk mixing all our colors so that final step will be uh, will be omitted from this video but uh, since you're seeing this you know not live the pictures of him with the null oil added will be following this video and you will also get to see him with a base I'll do the base off camera but again since you're seeing this not live you will see the pictures of him with a base on it let me get these things here flip them over all right I think I think that's probably good for that color. Oh, I forgot to do his eyes. I need—I did the squig's eyes. I need to do his eyes. Um, we'll probably do those in blue. I think blue. Frost heart, specifically. Why not? We've used every other color. Why not some nice frost heart? And we'll put it in there a little bit heavy, so it kind of looks like they're glowing a little bit, maybe. Just pull it back a tiny bit from there. Good. That'll work. That will work just fine. All right. And then our screaming bell. Again, with the dry brush over brush, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is our last color, but I think it is. Oh, this hasn't been used yet. Let me give it a little bit more of a shake. By my count, we have nine minutes left for the hour, so we are just fine on that front. So I'll get some of this Screaming Bell, and how about one of these guys? Give it a little bit of a dry brush. And this thing here, maybe on these guys, maybe a little bit heavier dry over brush on these. side as well. And then we'll pick out some spots on the leg here. And maybe this pipe. Why not? Let's see what else. Oh yeah, these little Things here and the little ones here. We'll have to go a little heavier, obviously, because they're not a, uh, they're not painted, or they're not a. Uh, they're just painted black, but that's okay. Do that. Then maybe the little bolts on his jaw thing here, and then a couple little details on his sword. I think I'm going to go just along the edge of his blade here. For no other reason than why not. Just wipe that off. Got a little too heavy on that. And then the inside line here. Get it on this side as well. There we go. Doesn't look too bad. What else we got over here? We got some some bolts holding this skull on. We'll do them. Uh, let's see. I think I'll change these to copper. A couple of like more little details. Oh yeah, his uh his other pistol here. Give that a little bit of love. All right. Oh, this little tooth right here. It just became a bronze tooth. Why not? And with that, I 
think, let's see, what do we have? Six minutes left? Yeah, we can do a little bit of highlighting. Why not? So let's grab a layer paint. What's handy? Sure. Uh, Myconid Spore. Sure. Throw some of this down. Give myself a thin brush. And let's just highlight a couple things. So maybe his teeth and his mouth up here. Just because they're, they're a little washed out since I did paint them green earlier. Give it there. I'm being a not not doing full coverage, trying to just sort of match the style of slap chop. So I'm just putting a couple, as you can see, hopefully. See there, I'm leaving some of the color under it. I'm just kind of highlighting the top of it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, there's some stitching back here I wanted to get. So yeah, we'll get this thing while I'm here. Why not? Doing the stitching right there. I feel like there was something else. But maybe not. I think that's good. For that. Um, let's do... Maybe the... How about the white, actually? I'm going to do the white. Uh, the Banshee white. Get a little bit of this. I'm just going to mix it with that Myconid Spore so it's a little browner, not completely pale white. Just no, not mixing them like, you know, in any technical way. I'm just kind of smushing them together. And then I'm just going gonna, gonna to drag my brush up this fur to give it a little more oomph. this right there and go along there and then down his back here just going very gently so I don't I don't want to paint this fur I just want to get the ridges of it and then I think with four minutes to spare by my watch or three minutes now um, believe we'll call him done super battle ready basic paint scheme um if i was going to go further i would paint all the little scales and stuff on him um, i'd go in and highlight all the other stuff and whatchamacallit um, but the only other things i'm going to do to him before you see the pictures are i'm going to null oil all the metallic and then i'm going to put him on a base and then right about now you should be seeing pictures of him with all those things done on a base. Nice and based, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that'll do it. Um, this is a new format. Like I said, it's not going to be every video. I just felt like instead of having to start and stop the camera, just turn the camera on, paint for an hour, turn the camera off, call it a day. Um, if you like this format, please let me know. If you don't like this format, also please let me know. Um, and if you want to see more videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.